Hi, everybody. Let me make sure we're rolling here. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Kabir Segel, and welcome to the matinee. Welcome to the matinee edition, Saturday matinee edition of the Quarantine Concert Series. Um, I started the series to um, really help in a time of, I think, of need because almost all events have been canceled, and a lot of musicians rely on uh, gigs and concerts. It's not just musicians, it's all the, the producers and the the engineers and the event promoters, we're all going through a difficult time because we're practicing social distancing. And even though we're apart, maybe we can use technology to bring everyone together. And we've been doing these series um, every night at 10 p.m. Eastern. Uh, we've had an incredible artist join us so far. And today we have a 3 p.m. showing and a 10 p.m. showing. We're doing two shows on the weekends. And uh, today I'm so excited to, um, to introduce my friend and I've known him for several years now. We worked on a couple of projects together. He's one of the most talented um, composers and pianists uh, that I've ever met. And I think you're all in for a special treat to, uh, to learn about uh, Manuel Valera. Manuel, are you there? I am here. Uh, can you hear me? Me and uh, I can hear you. Can you hear cool. me? Well, yeah, welcome to the party. Welcome to the party. So, uh, <laughs> first time you're doing this, huh? First time. This is the first awesome. time for everything. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, maybe you can start us off, and, and before we start playing, maybe you can tell us a little bit about, um, you came, give us a quick, you know, 30 second overview. You, you came from Cuba, and give us a, a trajectory of where you've been since then. Oh man, since, in 30 seconds, that's a yeah, lot. Yeah, just to hit the, highlight, uh, hit the highlights. <laughs> well, you know, I, I moved to New York in 2000 to go to school, the new school, university. new school university, and then um, graduated in 2003, I think. And then I started working, and then I started working, around, working with a lot of people, people like Paquito de Rivera, Arturo uh, Sandoval, um, Justin Watts, uh, just a lot of people. And then, you know, I've been able to record the 14 or 15 cities as, uh, as the leader since then. It's been, been great to play my music and, you know, I don't know. It's 30 seconds is not a long time. That's kind of the, I know, I know. I want people, people, people to get a, I want people to just get a flavor. We're going to get into all this. But what? Um, why don't we start with some music? What are you going to begin the show with? Uh, that's a good question. I'm not sure. All right, play, play I'll something. something out. I figured something. Right. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. 
Great job, my friend. Great job. So. Great job. Great job, my friend. Uh, sounds awesome. Sounds awesome. So tell me, man, um, what is the, the latest album you've been working on? What is it called? Um, well, this year I'm going to have, I was planning to have two, but now with this whole coronavirus thing, I'm not sure. But uh, the main one that I've been working on this year is a big band, big band album that we're doing, uh, that we recorded in December of last year. And I'm in the process of finishing that up. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to be collaborating with you on it. Tell, tell everyone, yeah, if, 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 you're willing, if you're willing to share, maybe you can give people some hints about what the project's about. Um, well, the project is, um, is uh, about, Five years ago, I was commissioned by Chamber Music America to write this this uh, song cycle based on uh, Jose Marti's pro poetry. And for those of you that don't know much about, if you don't know anything about Cuban history, you don't know who you you wouldn't know Jose Marti is. But even if you know a little bit about Cuban history, you would know that that he's a, an incredible figure in Latin American uh, 18, uh, 19th century everything politics writing. Uh, you know, uh, standing up against oppression and that kind of thing. And uh, he's, when, when he was in New York, well, he, he, he lived in New York for about 10 years in the 1880s. And while he was here, he wrote perhaps his most important work. He was also uh, a fantastic, fantastic poet and writer. Uh, his most important work is called Verses Sencillos and was written while he was in New York. And I used the, the poetry from that book to, to write this song cycle about five years ago which was commissioned by chamber music america and then last year it was a very difficult year for me for personal stuff and um i was able to um i had this idea to 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 expand this project for a big band setting and i reached out to my good friend freddie castablanco at a terraza and we started a um, uh, once a month uh residency there with a the big band and I was able to just write all that music and it you know it just took off uh it's it's a big band record but it also has uh it has two singers and two two of my favorite singers uh in New York which will make them two of my two favorite singers probably in the world the great uh, Camila Mesa from Chile and also Sofia Rey from uh, Argentina sounds, yeah sounds uh the great singers, and I'm familiar with their work. I'm familiar with a lot of your composition work. Um, hey, when you when you write music, what's your process for writing music? I know that sounds broad, but let's say let's say on a commission, um, and like, how do you structure your time? Do you like set a deadline to write it? I've got to write it by a certain time, or do you? How do you? Um, um, yeah, I'm, I'm I definitely uh, I'm definitely anti procrastination. No. So I I. Um, like when I get a commission, I try to I try to get it out of the way. I try, I try to to finish as as soon as I can, so I can move on to other things. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes you, you get these blocks. You know, like I was supposed to write this um, a piece for two pianos that I was commissioned like three years ago, and it was incredibly hard for me to just sit at the piano and do it because it was a new thing for me. It was a new new format, and it's very difficult to write for two pianos. So on that one, I kind of stalled a little bit, but generally, I try to to um, to do as as quickly as possible. Uh, obviously, obviously meeting the deadline set by the uh, by the uh, forget the I don't I don't want to say the commissioner. That sounds kind of funny. But by the person by the person that that the person or the organization that that gives you this grant. Um, and as far as technically, I try to, I try to, I try to, I try to have some link yeah. between the entire piece, whether it be a melodic link or a, mm -hmm. a harmonic link, both. or both. So, There's uh, also a lot, a lot of times when I do this kind of piece, there's, um, thematic, there's a thematic, um, thematic, things, that thematic things that happen throughout the piece, uh, so, um, so almost coming out of the classical world. So, I don't know. I don't know if that answers your question. It's very oh, it answers, broad. It answers my question very well. All right. What, uh, why don't you play another one for us? All right. All right. 
Uh, this, is uh, this is actually um, since, 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 I have, since I have so much time at home now, I uh, I um I started doing this challenge for myself, for myself and, hopefully, and hopefully other people start doing it because it's good. Uh, uh, that I will write a tune a day. Uh, um, it doesn't have to, it doesn't be, have to be super long. It doesn't have to be super super, super uh, um, complex or anything. But just to just to get your mind off of things, turn off the TV, and just work on something new. And this is actually the first tune that I wrote for the challenge. And they don't have names. So here you go, let's see. Thank you. 
You have to, you have to bow after, after I apply it. You have to I bow. I want to hear. You, I want to see you bow. <laughs> awesome. That's, awesome. That's good. That's pretty good. Yeah. Awesome. Hey. Um. So tell me, you you got a a, a Guggenheim uh, fellowship last year, correct? Last year, yeah. Yeah, tell me, um, tell me about that process and, and tell me about what that meant to you to be selected as a Guggenheim Fellow. Man, it was, uh, it was, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Hello? Oh, okay. yes. Oh, yeah, I think you froze. No, it was, uh, it was an amazing uh, honor, man. You know, like it's, uh, like some of my favorite composers have been chosen for this. And, um, I wouldn't have expected in in a million years, but I guess somebody was paying attention to what I was doing, and they thought I was uh, deserving of that honor. And uh, it was, I mean, I couldn't believe it. And I was able to to do a lot of writing last year because of it, including some of the big band uh, music that I wrote. Um, and yeah, no, it was it was it was a lot of. It was, it was great to not have to worry about doing tours that you didn't want to do or gigs you didn't want to do and just focus on writing music for for six months or whatever it was. What's the what's the output? What is the output going to be from the Guggenheim? How have you spent your time? Um, including, including the Jose Marti stuff. I think last year I was able to write like, I forget what it was, but like big band arrangements, I was able to do like 30. Um, just, just, just for myself and some for, for other people as well. But um, for me, I was able to do about 30 for my big band and I kind of got addicted to it. I got, I got addicted to writing for the big band, which I guess is a, it's a pretty healthy addiction, you know, as far as addictions go. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, do you find that, I mean, it's a super competitive process uh, to get at Guggenheim. Have you found that that's helped sort of with the bookings and discovery of who you are in terms of your profile? Um, it definitely, I think it definitely makes people, may, makes people look twice, you know, when somebody tells you it's a, a Guggenheim fellow. I mean, it's a really, it's a really high honor as far as musical composition goes in the United States. So I think I think it's helped some, but I don't, I'm not I'm not sure how much how much it has helped. I think it's it's definitely has helped in bringing awareness to me and my music and you know my playing and stuff like that. Yeah, I hear you. Okay, cool. Um, how about another one, Maestro? All right. What should I do? Uh, let's see. Oh, all right. Now, I'll do this, this is um, this is an older tune of mine that I recorded a bunch, and compositionally, the, the kind of interesting thing is that all the sections are seven-bar phrases, and this is called spiral.
Awesome, man. Really well done. I, uh, I enjoyed that one. What was the name of that piece again? It's called Spiral. Spiral. I felt it. I felt it. I was spiraling with you. Um, yeah, man. Hey, while, while we're here, I want to kind of read some of the comments and people who are, who are joining us. Hey, if you're watching at home, thanks for joining us. Uh, we really appreciate it. So we're still kind of working through all the technology, so I appreciate your patience as we, as we move the, through this. Some of the people who are with us, uh, Nora Martinez, um, uh, Fernidad Guzman says, gracias, thanks. Uh, Danke, merci. So he said thank you in all languages to you, Manuel. Um, oh. Oh. Uh, Lima down in Houston says, I'm listening. She says, Manuel, that's a lot of music being played from one page of staff paper. <laughs> it is. And we have. Uh, make it up as you go. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Uh, Berta Moreno says, hello, hola. Um, so my friends in India say, good work guys, um, with love. Um, someone wants to ask, what are your biggest influences? Who are your biggest influences growing up musically? Huh, well, it depends on what age of my life you're talking about. And also it depends um, what, what, what is this a composition or is it piano wise? But anyway, I'll give you, when I, when I was really young, I was really into um, Cuban, Cuban music. 
especially uh, a lot of the timba groups that were really popular when I was young. Bands like uh, Los Bam Bang and Anahel Banda. And I was really, I really loved that. Even though I was in the, in a classical observatory and you, and you didn't really learn much about uh, traditional Cuban music, um, I was really into that, into Cuban uh, popular music. But also when I was young, I was exposed at home through my father, through a lot of uh, a lot of jazz artists because he's a he's a fantastic uh, alto saxophonist who's still around, still playing, still lives in Miami, and I was able to you know to listen to a lot of people that that you know maybe at the time I wasn't completely you know into, but I think subconsciously it, it laid a seed in me. People like Chet Baker, Jim Hall. Um, Paul Desmond, you know things like that. And then as I as I grew older, I um I discover like when I was when I was uh, between between let's say fifteen and twenty, I listened to a lot of a lot of people from the the bebop era uh, and po you know I think they called post bop. Like I was really into uh, Winton Kelly and Red Garland, Oscar Peterson. Um, I, I checked out this uh, this album from the uh, from the library, and it's, it was the Clifford Brown album that has uh, Joy Spring and Delilah's Dilemma. I forget the name. It's a red cover, and that album kind of changed changed my life in a way. Like I would, you know, I, that's when I decided that that's that's what I liked and that's what I wanted to do. So for a long time, it was like you know, listening to a lot of Clifford, listening to a lot of Bill Evans, Red Garland. Oscar Peterson, and then later on, I got into um, people like McCoy Tyner, who recently passed away, and Chick Corea, Herbie Hancock, Kid Jer, you know, the Kenny Kirkland. Who are some, but it's hard to name just one. Yeah, you know? what are, I mean, you mentioned McCoy Tyner, who was such a, you know, incredible and um, just legendary artist. What are some of his works that really you found pointed or really inspired you, McCoy Tyner? What about his music uh, really Well. Me? I mean, uh, his work with, with Coltrane is obviously, like you know, it's quintessential. You know, it's like that's that's massive. But his his CDs, I mean, I, I love all his stuff that he did for Impulse, uh, Conception, his first record. Um, you know, the he has another one called um, the Real McCoy classic classic record, one of my favorites. Um, but you know, definitely his work with culture. And I mean, for me, his work with culture was, was also even more influ influential than his solo work. Yeah, have you ever seen him play live with Kawhi Did you ever see him play Actually, live? Actually, the very first time that I that I, that I I played a, a major jazz festival, the Hollywood Jazz Festival with my band, we opened up for McCoy Tyner. And that was, of course, wow. that, was, that was fucking <laughs> nerve wracking, you know? Yeah, I bet, I bet. <laughs> What did you play? What song? What, what begin? What song did you begin your set with? Do you remember? I can't remember, man. That was like two thousand four, something like that. Three or four, I, I can't remember. But yeah, I, I did see him. He was playing. I forget the bass player, but he was playing with Eric Gravatt on drums. Which can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Which, which I, it's funny because Eric Gravatt, I, I always associated him with, with the early version of Weather Report. You know, to see him with McCoy, it was, it was, it was, it was cool. Yeah, totally. Hey, I was, you know, looking through your bio, and I, I mean, we've known each other for a while now. You, you've really played with everyone um, on the scene, but is there someone out there that you haven't played with that you would like to collaborate with? And if so, who is that? Um... And there's a lot of people. I mean, I love I love Joe Lovano. It would be great to play with him. Um, I mean, like, some of the people that I really wanted to collaborate, unfortunately, have passed away. Like, I, I really would have loved to play with Michael Brecker, for example. Um, I don't know, man. There's a there's a lot of people whose music I you know really I really love. Um, and I try to make a point to tell people that I want to play with them because sometimes people, I don't know, people think that you either might not be into it or too busy or whatever. But, 
But who's on the scene today that um, we can put out the public announcement in this <laughs> concert series? We'll, we'll start tagging them on our posts. I mean, you know, actually, uh, I love I love Dave Douglas uh, music. And uh, the Big Band record is actually going to come out on his uh, Green Leaf music label. So he's somebody that I would love to play with, you know, just because it's um, really interesting and I kind of see myself in, you know, in his, in his music, but I don't know, let's see. Yeah, well, Dave, if you're listening, I know you guys are already in touch because you're putting the album up with yes. him, but if, yeah, yeah. if you're listening, we should do a, 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 a album, the, the new Cuban Express featuring Dave Douglas. How about that? That sounds good. That sounds good. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Let me let's see if we can work on it. Um, all right, man. Um, how about um, another one for us? All right. And before we start, let me just read some comments. Fran Kaufman okay. says, uh, beautiful interlude in these times. And uh, Quinn Hedges says, I love the real McCoy. When we're talking about McCoy Tyner, we do too. And thanks, Quinn, for joining. Matt Garrity joined. Matt um, is an incredible artist and he has um, He's been working with a lot of artists out in Peru. So thank you all for joining. And if you have a question for Manuel or for me, just like drop it in the comments. We would love to um, respond to you personally. And uh, if you have any uh, song requests, let us know. And maybe Manuel will consider it as well. <laughs> we'll, yeah. we'll challenge him. We'll challenge him we'll to take, see. I'll take, I'll take requests. Take a request. If you have a request, everyone watching at home, let us know what you want to hear. And thank you for, you know, joining us on this afternoon matinee session. So, Manuel, why don't you come up with one more for us? Uno mas, por favor. All right. All right.
speak for everyone watching. I know it, so it sounds like one person clapping, but there are a lot of applause emojis going on. So let me <laughs> round of applause, right? Round of applause. It's on, yeah. The 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 one the one person clap is is, is is cool. It's like your mom, you know. Yeah, exactly. Well, mom, you know, that's that's like when when you're when you're at home. I yeah, I'm broadcasting here from the from the dining room, and uh, in my parents' house, I'm hunkered down here, and um, <clears throat> I got away with a 3 p.m. showing today because I told my mom and dad um, I was like, "Can I do what two showings today?" They said, "Sure." So they're taking a nap right now. So when they take a nap or when they sleep is when I can do these broadcasts. So the afternoon nap is time oh, wow. shows, but um, but my mom wished me <laughs> you well during this as well. So um. Dude, I want to know, last year we worked on a project together. It was called The Planets, and we recorded it in, um, yeah. in Queens in Astoria, right? And you have some incredible artists in there. Can you talk to me about your project, The Planets? I think it's a, one of the more overlooked projects of, of the last year. I know I'm biased because I was part of it. But tell me about, about uh, you know, when, you, when we talked about the concept behind it, I didn't know much about this guy who, written, who had written that book. Um, and then I looked it up. All right. It sort of like opened my eyes to, to a new way of thinking. So maybe you can share with people what the idea was that, or in the person and the thinking was that inspired your album, The Planets. Okay. Well, when I was about 16 years old, um, my father took me to his great friend, Mario Rivera, who's a saxophone player. I used to play with like Tito Puente for the most part. But he was an amazing, like, kind of like, um, I don't even know how, how to describe him, but he was like a, like a, like an oracle or something, you know, like, like really like some, somebody really heavy. And, um, and I went to his house and I was, I was 16, you know, and I was starting to play jazz and, you know, he, he gave me, he handed me this book, this book by uh, Nikolai Slonimsky. It's called The Thesaurus of Scale, Scales and Melodic Patterns. And essentially, the book is a it's a thesaurus on how to get from all the variations that you could have in getting from from one note to the next, generally in an octave, you know, or two octaves or three octaves. But it's all very mathematical, you know, kind of crazy. Coltrane uh, studied from it. Alan Holdsworth studied from it. It's, it's become kind of like a cold thing in in between jazz musicians. Anyway. So I had the book, the book seemed crazy to me, of course. I was like, how could I possibly use this? You know, and that was like, you know, 20. So and, and then I had the book and I, once in a, you know, once in a while I was, I was studying and check it out, and whatever. But then I started really checking it out when I was in my, in my late twenties and you know, like really seriously checking it out. And a lot of my, my improvisation kind of came out of that book. And the book has very interesting, it's, it's serialism, the, you know, so it has very interesting shapes and scales like this. You know, there's it's a parallel of this and this, it's the same. It's just a triton apart. Mm -hmm. You know, like stuff like that, like stuff that's like, you know, like serialism, you know, people that think of stuff, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, um, so, so anyway, I, you know, when I got this, this is another Chamber of Music America commission that I got in 2018 or 17. And I was like, man, you know, like no, nobody really uses this. A lot of people use it for improvisation, but not too many people use it for, for composing. And it's supposed to be a compositional tool anyway. Originally it was a compositional tool. Right. So, so I, you know, I just, I started developing this, um, this scales kind of coming out of the book, and then I developed this harmonic structure that fitted around the scales using the uh, the chord tones, and and I, I wrote the the piece the piece based on the book on the thesaurus. Not not all the obviously not not all of the thesaurus because that would take forever. The book is like this thick, but um, uh, yeah, and and the music came out came out really interesting. Uh, because it has it has this um, it has this touch of like a foreign kind of harmonic thing that's not really 
you, you can't really you know it's something but you can't put your finger on it you know right sort of like sort of like it could it could almost sound a little bit like like something free or something like free jazz maybe but not really because it has it's very you could tell that there is some something something heavily conceptual behind the music and yeah. the improvising is also kind of based on the concept so it was it was a nightmare for Hans Lovishny who plays bass on it because the you know obviously the the bass has become super angular uh, he's a beast so he he was fine yeah he's an amazing, amazing bass yeah. player um how do you check do you always play with the same guys in your band and in the men of our trio or do you switch it up uh at the, at the time we, we have been playing for like um four years or something like that so it, it was pretty pretty constant but now i started doing some some different different trio i have a trio with mark wiffle jr and yasushi nakamura and we did a record uh, that was well. It was a it was a gig that was recorded uh, by France Music uh, last not last fall but the fall fall of 2018, and that's a, it was supposed to come out in May, but we don't know now what's gonna happen with that because yeah. Uh, but th that's that's with that trio, and uh, I mean it's, it's they're killing. It's just uh, a lot different than the other trio, which is good. Yeah, I want to ask you one more thing, and maybe and maybe you can we can. Um finish with one song, but one last song. Um, you know, we're all going through a very difficult time and uh, with all these gay cancellations, not just gay cancellations, obviously, this, you know, what's, what's going on with the pand pandemic. How can music play a role um, in bringing people together? And, and what message do you want to send to your fellow artists right now? Man, that's... Um, uh, I hope you have savings. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's true. Uh, no, it's it's rough out there, man. Like it's it's so rough out there, you know. Uh, I would just tell my friends that and fellow artists, you know, just use it, you know, get something positive out of this, you know. Do a lot of writing, do a lot of practicing. You know, there's nothing we could do about this now. The cancellations, the loss of revenue, the, I mean, it's brutal. It's brutal for us, but there's nothing, there's, that, that part, that part is set and there's nothing we could do about it. And I see a lot of people trying to do online lessons and stuff, and that's cool too, you know, try to, try to see how, try to monetize your art in, in a different way. Um, this is actually my first interaction with, with the video with the the thing that I hope is not the new the new normal, uh, because I still love playing for people and I love the interaction with the crowd as opposed to with my pictures and books. <laughs> we're all here. This um, is the we're all living in we're all living in uh, in boxes now. On, on yeah, time. I mean you know it's it is it's a rough time and we're really I know yeah you're spending I mean, I'm, time. I'm trying, I, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, no, no, I just, uh, I just, I just think, you know, keep your, keep your hair high and, you know, just exercise and do stuff that you would normally do, you know, meditate maybe. I mean, I started to meditate a little bit, which is kind of nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, try to just, you know, try to keep center. You know, this is hard. It's hard to, because it's very stressful when, when you don't have money, you know. I hear you. I hear you. Well, that's, that's why we're trying to put these, these gigs together uh, for musicians. And, um, Speaking about meditation, a lot of you listening at home, uh, Manuel's music you can find on, on Spotify, all the platforms. Um, his music is, especially some of his introspective music is stuff you can meditate on. Uh, Manuel, maybe you can play um, maybe a, an uplifting one uh, for your final number. And if you can, maybe something from the from your Cuban background for the final, for the final piece. Can you hear me, Manuel? Maybe we lost him. Um, but look, if we if we did lose Manuel, I do want to say thanks to everyone for joining. Um, we can't see Manuel's image. We're still kind of working out all the technology for these webinars, sessions. We've done, I think, four or five of them already. Uh, most of them have gone without a hitch. I'm going to give a hat tip to um, Sandra and Camilo on the back end for helping uh, with this production. And um, I want to thank you all for joining. This is the first of two showings today. This is a matinee. 
And to, uh, tonight we're going to be uh, going on at 10 p.m. Eastern, 10 p.m. Eastern, and uh, we're going to be uh, presenting my friend Mehmet Ali Salnikol. He's a professor at the New England Conservatory. Uh, he's a, a music scholar. He speaks many, many, um, he speaks many musical traditions, that is. He plays many instruments. And we worked on an album last year um, that we'll talk to you about tonight. So look, keep the music rolling. Um, I hope you enjoy the series. If you want to get on the, on the broadcast, um, hit me a note on Instagram or Facebook, drop a comment, and, and you can continue the conversation with Manuel and myself in the comments below. Thanks so much for joining us on a Saturday afternoon. Stay healthy, stay strong, and God bless you all. Take care. I got it, I got it. Got it. I got it.